Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, Kessa Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, the internet is a wild place. Now, I've always made privacy uh, a real focus on my channel. Always talked about how to keep your data safe, especially against hackers, especially against weird, you know, rootkit, you know, malware, things of that nature. But, uh, you know, for me, privacy is something that, you know, I get a bit of a criticism for. You know, sometimes people ask me, why do I use 700 virtual machines? Well, it's because uh, I, ru I like running weird code underneath sandboxes, because even if the code is malicious or if it's not the furthest it's ever going to get is the little sandbox that I gave it now I really have nothing to hide I mean the most degenerate stuff that you're going to find on my computer is probably like some futanari stuff okay that, that's about as wild as you're going to get okay some real raunchy futanari nonsense now if you don't know what that is <clears throat> I highly recommend you don't Google it, okay? Now, Apple is basically inventing a new service uh, from, the from the name of Neural Match, okay? Basically, the service will be taking hashes from known illegal material, like illegal files, so you can imagine what illegal images means. Uh, you know, it could be whatever snuff that gets shared around on the deepest trenches of Facebook, whatever you want to call it, right? Like the worst stuff that humanity has dug up. So they're taking known hashes, apparently, of illegal files, you know, files that get seized by the FBI, by numerous agencies, and they get added to a database of known files that are illegal. So for instance, all right, let's say that you have a massive tragedy, right? And it has a violent footage attached to it and people are just sharing it around like no tomorrow. Well, in a lot of places now, hosting those files is actually illegal. Now those files come with hashes, perceptual image hashes. And if those files are cataloged and stored, what Apple can do is download those known illegal hashes of those files compared to the hashes on your device and if they find a match then you could be triggered for some sort of a search at least that's what it sounds like now to understand i've found confirmation from somebody known as matthew green okay who's someone that teaches cryptography at john hopkins so an actual expert over here no joke this person has said i've had independent confirmation from multiple people that apple is releasing a client side tool for csam scanning tomorrow this is a really bad idea now I've read this and I guess I guess we're a day late here actually ladies and gentlemen it's apparently live today if you got an iPhone well it's probably running this tool according to this post right here so a little update to the whole video it seems like today August 5th uh, TechCrunch was told by Apple that they're actually planning on putting this kind of stuff in at least for iCloud and iMessage and various services that they have and they did say that Dropbox Google Microsoft already scan user files which I absolutely agree with and I'm mentioning in this video too it's going to be a little all over over the place especially with these like post updates they did say neural hash will land in ios 15 and the next mac os that comes out monterey i guess uh, i don't even know how they name these ones but whatever anytime you modify an image slightly it changes the hashes and can prevent matching apple says neural hash tries to ensure that identical and visual similarly images in fact right here i think this page just got updated with apple where they're actually telling you that they're putting expanded protections for kids in ios 15 new ipad watch os and mac os uh, and then they've got like a, an example over here. So if you're on iMessages and let's say that, you know, the on device intelligence, which these devices come with like neural processors, uh, Apple devices are pretty good for that. Uh, they actually have like intervention. So if you do get like a weird message, like right here, check out this photo, weird, sensitive photo. Uh, I mean, I guess you can open this one, but then like, if you do, your parents get a notification, which is interesting. And I'm sure parents, if they're connected in the iCloud system can probably type tighten things up even harder, which I mean, all of this is, is, is nice stuff to add for sure. I mean, I obviously understand like at some point with technology like this, you do have to sort of sympathize and you sort of have to understand that there, there has to be like an in-between, if you will, but it is way more nuanced still. Let's get down to the rest of the video. But the reality is let's get down to what actually is really happening, the actual truth behind it, because that's something I like to do on this channel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are two images, right? As an example, this is illegalimage.jpg and that's legalimage.png. There's no reason, you know, they're, they're, I'm just naming them for an example. The illegal image is obviously my face, you know, it's illegal in some places, I'm pretty sure. Now, if I use the MD5 sum and you can just calculate 
calculate these real quickly. The illegal images sum is 798D0EBFB, right? And a string of numbers that comes afterwards. Now the legal image is this string of characters, C4B81C9BA. At the very, very, very layman's level term, what this means is that on Apple's servers and Apple's devices, when they're checking for known illegal hashes, let's say that the illegal image, which could be anything illegal, right, has been captured by the FBI or any Europol agency that you can find, any law enforcement group. Now they send this to a giant like neural farm, a giant catalog of illegal files. So now the hash has been registered as illegal. So this is a very quick way to tell if an illegal file is shared, right? Now what's going on here is something even wilder called perceptual hash checking, right? And I'm guessing I'm gonna explain what's going on. This is something that occurs on every cloud service anyways. Whether you use Google Cloud, whether you use, I guess even iCloud or Microsoft, a lot of these services have designed tools. Google actually uses something called YouTube CSAI, which actually detects illegal material. If you upload anything wrong to YouTube, it'll check against that. And then if it finds a match, you're screwed. Same with Microsoft, same with really any organization. So to understand what's going on, very lighthearted example. Let's say that you want to build a neural AI engine to find cakes, right, in an image. So the way that you do it is you would take actual pictures of cakes, all kinds of cakes, red velvet cake, white cake, black cake, brown cake, moose cake, ice cream cake, all the kind of cakes you can find. The more the better. Because the way artificial intelligence works is the more information it has to work with, the more information it can discern, the better its detection mechanisms usually are. So basically, if I had a giant cake AI where I fed it like a, a million images of cake, right? The AI would be so good at finding cakes that I could take any image like this, for instance, right? It could look at me real quick. So the way that perceptual hashing is working is that it takes a check of my face, it makes this a hash, it makes this monitor a hash, it makes that TV a hash, it makes this G Fuel Tower a hash. You understand what I'm going with, right? So everything over here has its hash, meaning that even if the image is contorted, twisted, you know, scale differently, it will still be able to roughly identify these products, right? So even if I flip the image, the actual hashing will be able to identify, that's the monitor, but it's just flipped, right? If I stretch my face out, it'll say, okay, that's just Mudahar, but stretched out a little bit. Now, what it's not able to do is find a cake, because if it has a million references of cake to work with, there's clearly no cake in the image. So at that point, it just doesn't work, all right? So that's kind of a rough example of what's going on. And that's basically, if this is to be believed, what Matthew Green is saying, this is kind of what Apple is bringing onto the table. Now, the problem with this is it's incredibly privacy breaking in a lot of ways. Now, Apple is a company that says privacy is a fundamental human right. At Apple, it's also one of our core values. Your devices are important to so many parts of your life. What you share with those experiences and who you share it with should be up to you. And Apple is really big on privacy to the point where they're pissing off all of their friends in Silicon Valley. If you don't know, Facebook and all of its services are actually a little bit pissed at Apple right now because Apple is starting to do these like nutritional labels like hey this game you're downloading it can check your camera it fucks around with your microphone hey it looks into your contact data hey they know how big your dick is that's uh, that's kind of what apple's been doing lately and it's been pissing everyone off they also have a built-in system feature to like prevent tracking like do not track like literally prevent all the tracking angles from these applications how effective is it is a different story but Apple's been pissing off their friends like that. However, if this is to be believed, if they're implementing a tool like this directly onto the device that you, no one can opt out of, this kind of brings privacy into a bigger of a question. Now, at the end of the day, Apple is a company that was sued by the FBI. They had a big legal case with the FBI around 2015, 2016. And uh, even though Apple stood up to the FBI, there, have to, there has to be compromises behind the scenes, obviously. You have to imagine that at some point, there's only so far you can get with that. If the government wants something, they'll get something, all right? Now, there's been a lot of discussion online, like this is only gonna be limited to helping children out, right? With illegal material and whatnot, which is a noble cause. And it's very hard to argue against it. And in a lot of ways, I just don't want to argue against it. The technology already exists in cloud services. And the fact that it does exist to identify illegal imagery and to report it appropriately and quickly is something that I really don't have an issue with. How What I do have an issue with is when you can't opt out and when it's done on a local device that you purchase. Now, Apple devices have been touted as privacy focused devices. And if you're implementing services like this, well, you're sure nobody else is spying on you, but now you've invited a third party 
third-party company into your house that basically says, we have this giant camera on you, okay? We'll only use it if you're doing bad things. We promise. We promise. Now, when you're dealing with neural networks and artificial intelligence, false positives are a pretty common thing that can happen, okay? By developing a lot of these image, you know, detection tools, you're going to have situations where it fucks up. I mean, computers are not the smartest things in the world. They're good when given proper instructions, but they don't, they really lack that humanness to it, right? So they're going to make false positives and you're going to have to have an actual human being look into those false positives. Now, nothing in the situation really screams out that people, Apple will be able to grab every single image and look through. So if you say have something personal, right? Maybe you, your family, your kids, or something else that could trip a false positive, anything could trip a false positive. Um, there's nothing that says they can grab each individual file and look. What may happen is they'll look at those cryptographic hashes, they'll probably make a good educated guess, and maybe an investigation gets launched, if it gets that far. A lot of these engines are getting better over time, and I really have no idea. I mean, even Matthew has no fucking idea what's going on with a lot, what algorithm Apple is really truly bringing to the party. So if it's sufficiently advanced enough, I mean, false positives need to be eliminated as quick as possible. But uh, it's going to happen one way or another. The the other big issue is something that we call collision attacks. Now, in some cases, and it's not super likely, in some cases you can have a situation where the cryptographic hashes match. There are plenty of attacks that exist to sort of spoof or cause a higher rate of collision attacking. Now, the big question here, before we go back to, uh, you know, the collision attacking, because it's very important for this uh, statement, is will this technology only be used to attack illegal things. Now, illegal things can mean a lot depending on where you live. Apple operates in almost every country. China is one of them. Now, Chinese people are great. I love China, but their government is very questionable in a lot of ways, right? And uh, unfortunately, in China, you don't really have that right to question your government, right? It's fucked up. It's wrong. And uh, no matter what, most people tend to disagree with it when they're out of that area. Now, in China, Apple has already kind of complied with Chinese regulations by, you know, sort of stopping VPNs back in the day. But in reality, with China, let's say that you're, you know, somebody that's not well off, or even if you're like a rich billionaire, the government, the state, the state definitely has some level of say over anything that you do. Lately, one of the biggest tech companies in the world, Tencent from China, which effectively is their version of Google, it might be the biggest tech company in the world at this point, had a massive drop in shares, actually, and they're kind of recovering because the state government decided out of nowhere to just call the video gaming industry, Tencent's games, really a form of spiritual opium or effectively just crack. And dude, I don't even disagree with the government on that one. But within a second, they kind of, you know, called and so, sort of tempered, you know, humbled, if you will, Tencent in a way, right? In a way. It's a place where like, no matter how well off you are, no matter where you are, saying anything against the government is basically your death knell. You've basically signed your fucking death warrant the moment you go up against the party. So now in a place where, you know, I would assume with this kind of a technology, is Apple potentially compelled to comply with their, you know, requirements? Imagine, for some reason, Winnie the Pooh is a big problem. You can't really share Winnie the Pooh in China because people use Winnie the Pooh to make fun of their actual premier, uh, prime minister, president, I, don't, I think it's president. But basically the idea is, is that imagine if Chinese people are sharing Winnie the fucking Pooh all the time on their devices with all slogans and everything, you know, basic, just, just to counter the government in a way, right? Maybe a resistance, maybe, you know, some second party trying to stand up to the big boys. Could you imagine for a second that if this technology is used against dissenters, what could happen? I mean, to understand if the government of China has like a billion like uh, hashes for anti-government propaganda, imagine running that against Chinese cellular devices or iPhones in general and having people get caught because of their anti-government dissent. That's fucking dangerous. Again, this is under the principle that this technology launches anywhere but the United States. And again, it's also under the assumption that it has the ability to expand uh, what it's detecting. And again, it's it's really up to a government to compel Apple to do this. And Apple can very well fight back against it. I mean, they have the money too. But again, there's a lot of assumptions on that. I just want to make that clear. Now, this gets a little scarier when we go back to the collision attacking. Somebody could send you a seemingly innocent image of like, you know, hello fucking kitty. Turns out it might have the same perceptual hash in some way as a known anti-propaganda image that the government doesn't want you to have. Well, what happens then? How do you argue that? I mean, there's going to have to be an investigation. Your life's going to be made a bit of a hell for a while. And that's a big problem that we see right there. 
but we're really skipping into, you know, what I would think is the theoreticals in this case. I've noticed in society though, whenever you have like nowadays, whenever you mention kids, really anything that's really, anything that can emotionally impact somebody heavily is often used and conflated to really allow this kind of overreach. At the end of the day, I don't disagree with the idea of stopping truly sick individuals and criminals from sharing illegal files all around. I'm actually completely okay with that. What I am against with is this level of basic user privacy breaching, okay? At the end of the day, no matter how you look at it, if the system gets implemented, it is privacy breaching and it does come with its own problems because computers have false positives all the time. Look, different issue, but YouTubers have to deal with a fuck ton of issues regarding just YouTube's bot in general too. So ladies and gentlemen, I have to wonder how, I have to wonder how this is all gonna play out. But right now I wanted to give the real truth behind the situation, sort of tell you that, hey, Apple might be implementing this thing. They might even have it implemented right now as part of this new update or something. They're really checking for known hashes. Now, there are issues with how those known perceptual hashes work, but until I actually get to see how complex Apple's system is, it they may have they may have solved it. They may have solved a lot of these issues. But in reality, you do still have to agree on the fact that now you have a opt out you have a you have a you have an unoptoutable situation by purchasing one of their devices and if this is implemented, your Apple device will now consistently and constantly use neural engines to scan hashes of each and every file you make. So, depending on how you feel on that, maybe into consideration when you're buying your next device. Do you want to continue and have your privacy potentially be breached? Do you want to go to Google or various other Android manufacturers that may also just be doing the exact same thing anyways? Or do you want to go and build your own Muda phone or get a Freedom phone where you may have more inconveniences, but at least the APIs and systems aren't there in order to constantly assess and you know run hash checks on every single file that you have. It's getting kind of scary now in a world where every single system that we have is constantly connected to some back-end internet service and there is a form of checking at this point our devices are not ours anymore okay it, they're definitely we're just authorized users on a device that we purchase or rent from another big company anyways so ladies and gentlemen let me know what you think if you like what you saw please like comment and subscribe dislike if you dislike it hope you actually learned something this is me mudahar and i am out